This video provides general information about diabetes to schools, licensed child care facilities, and agencies providing respite. It is based on the standard material produced by the Unified Referral and Intake System. Insulin is a hormone that helps the body use food for energy. After a person eats food, it is broken down into nutrients, such as glucose. Glucose is the basic fuel that the cells in our body need to function. This glucose then enters the bloodstream. The rise in blood glucose levels triggers the pancreas to release insulin. Insulin then binds to the receptors on the cells. This causes the receptor to open and let the glucose into the cell. Diabetes is a disease resulting from a lack of insulin. There are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the pancreas is unable to produce insulin. Therefore, glucose cannot enter the cells and be used for energy. Daily insulin injections are required to enable the body's cells to use glucose. Type 2 diabetes occurs when the pancreas does not produce enough insulin or when the body does not effectively use it. A person with type 2 diabetes may require insulin, but it may be managed with balancing food and exercise. Maintaining a proper balance of food, insulin, and exercise is essential to the management of diabetes. Food increases the amount of glucose in the blood, while insulin and exercise decrease the glucose in the blood. It is the responsibility of the parent to provide meals and snacks for their child. Children with diabetes can eat most foods that children love, including candy and sweets. However, a child with diabetes will have more success in maintaining a healthy glucose level if they eat the same amount of food each day, and eat meals and snacks at the same time each day. Missing a meal or snack may result in hypoglycemia. Children should not trade or throw away food. The parents should be advised if their child is giving food away or accepting food from others. Young children may require supervision to ensure they eat the food that has been provided for them. It is also important to notify the parents about special events that involve food so they can plan accordingly. Regular exercise is important and can help the body in lowering blood glucose. Some children may have a pre-planned snack that is eaten before exercise to prevent hypoglycemia. A person with type 1 diabetes requires daily insulin injections. Some people with type 2 diabetes may also require insulin. Insulin is administered in a variety of ways, including a needle and syringe, insulin pen, and insulin pump. It is the responsibility of the child or parent to administer insulin, and most injections can be done at home. If a child is administering insulin at the community program, it is recommended to have a sharps container on site. Hypoglycemia occurs when the blood glucose is less than 4 millimoles per liter. It can happen within minutes of a child appearing well. It will become a medical emergency if it is not treated. Hypoglycemia can be caused by not eating enough food, missing or delaying a meal, more physical activity than usual, or administering too much insulin. Symptoms of hypoglycemia include cold, clammy, or sweaty skin, tired, shakiness or lack of coordination, irritable or sudden moodiness, difficulty concentrating or confusion, staggering gait, fainting or loss of consciousness. The child may complain of nervousness, excessive hunger, headache, blurred vision, dizziness, or abdominal pain or nausea. 
Most school-aged children can tell when their blood glucose is low. However, younger children may not be aware of their symptoms. If the child is showing signs of hypoglycemia, check their blood glucose if their meter is available and time permits. If their blood glucose is less than 4 millimoles per liter or they are showing signs of hypoglycemia, have the child eat a fast-acting sugar. Wait 10 to 15 minutes and check their blood glucose again. If it is less than 4 millimoles per liter, or they are still showing signs of hypoglycemia, have the child eat a second fast-acting sugar. Wait another 10 to 15 minutes and check their blood glucose again. If it is still less than 4 millimoles per liter, or they are still showing signs of hypoglycemia, have the child eat a third fast-acting sugar and call their parent. If you are unable to contact the parent, Call 911. If in doubt, treat. If you suspect a child is experiencing hypoglycemia, treat with a fast acting sugar. The potential of eating extra sugar when their blood glucose is not low will not harm them. However, not treating hypoglycemia can result in an emergency situation. It is recommended that the child's supply of fast-acting sugars is easily accessible and staff know where it is located. Do not leave the child alone for at least 30 minutes after they have been treated for hypoglycemia. Once the child has fully recovered, they can resume regular activity. If a child has been treated for hypoglycemia just before a scheduled meal or snack, they should still eat all the food provided for them. Severe hypoglycemia occurs when the child's blood glucose level drops very low. The child may have a seizure or lose consciousness. Glucagon is a hormone that is used to treat severe hypoglycemia. It is administered in the nose or by injection. Community program staff can administer glucagon in the nose only. If the child has glucagon available by injection, it must be administered by the parent. Seeming glucagon nasal powder is now available in Canada. It is a dry nasal spray that is absorbed through the nose so it does not need to be inhaled. It will work even if the child is congested. It can be used with children that are four years of age or older. Vaccimi is available in one dose and can be administered into one nostril. It is stored in a shrink wrap tube and should not be opened until you are ready to use. If the tube has been opened, it can be exposed to moisture, which can cause it to not work as expected. Vaccimi has an expiration date and should be replaced when expired. However, it is safe to use an expired vaccine, but it may not be as effective. When using vaccine, remove the shrink wrap by pulling on the red strip. Open the lid and remove the device from the tube. Hold the device between your fingers and thumb. Do not push on the plunger yet. Insert the tip gently into one nostril until your fingers touch the outside of the nose. Push the plunger firmly all the way in. The dose has been given when the green line disappears. Discard the device and tube or give to EMS personnel when they arrive. If a child with diabetes has a seizure or loses consciousness, Place them on the floor in a sideline position. Administer Baxemi nasal powder if available. Call 911. Notify the child's parent. If the child is still experiencing signs of severe hypoglycemia after 15 minutes, a second dose of Baxemi may be given if available. 
Do not give food or fluid if the child is unconscious, having a seizure, or is unable to swallow. Hyperglycemia occurs when blood glucose is higher than the child's target range. Hyperglycemia is not a medical emergency and does not require immediate treatment. However, repeated hyperglycemia can result in long-term complications such as heart disease, blindness, and kidney disease. Possible causes of hyperglycemia include eating too much food, the child having less than their typical amount of physical activity, or not enough insulin. Illness and stress may also cause hyperglycemia. Symptoms of hyperglycemia include increased thirst, tired, and frequent urination. If a child is showing any of these signs, have their blood glucose checked if their monitor is available. Inform their parent if the blood glucose is above their desirable level, which is included in their health care plan. A child with diabetes should be allowed free access to water and a restroom. Children with diabetes are no more susceptible to illness than others. However, their blood glucose may be affected even with normal illness such as a cold or flu. Vomiting or the inability to retain food and fluids is serious as it can result in hypoglycemia. If a child with diabetes becomes ill, call their parent. Check their blood glucose if their monitor is available. If their blood glucose is less than 4 millimoles per liter or they are showing signs of hypoglycemia, treat. If they are vomiting and you cannot reach their parent, call 911. The nurse will provide additional information on the specific needs of children in your care. Also, Instructions on how to respond to a child's diabetes is included in their health care plan. If you do not know which children in your care have diabetes or how to access their health care plan, talk to your administrator.